Question 1. What is a tropical cyclone? Answer. A tropical cyclone is defined as a non-frontal low-pressure system of synoptic scale developing over warm waters having organized convection and a maximum mean wind speed of 34 knots or greater extending more than halfway around near the center and persisting for at least 6 hours. Every cyclone is unique varying according to a number of factors including life cycle, intensity, movement, size and impact, wind, storm surge and flooding. Question 2. Explain me what about tsunamis? Answer. A tsunami is a series of ocean waves with very long wavelengths, typically hundreds of kilometers, caused by large-scale disturbances of the ocean, such as earthquakes, landslide, volcanic eruptions, explosions, meteorites. These disturbances can either be from below, e.g. underwater earthquakes with large vertical displacements, submarine landslides, or from above, e.g. meteorite impact. They are not caused by tropical cyclones. Question 3. Why and how are cyclone names chosen? Answer. Tropical cyclones are named to provide ease of communication between forecasters and the general public regarding forecasts, watches, and warnings. Having a name also raises the profile of the cyclone heightening the public's awareness. Since the storms can often last a week or longer and that more than one can be occurring in the same region at the same time, names can also reduce the confusion about what's storm is being described. The Bureau of Meteorology maintains a list of names arranged alphabetically and alternating male and female. A name remains on the list until its corresponding cyclone severely impacts the coast e.g. Larry and Juan. The name is then permanently retired and replaced with another of the same gender and first letter. It can take over 10 years from the time a name is put on the list to when it is first used to name a cyclone. Question 4. What is the eye and eye wall? Answer. The circular eye or center of a tropical cyclone is an area characterized by light winds, fine weather and often clear skies. The eye is the region of lowest surface pressure. The size of the eye varies from one cyclone to the next ranging from 10 km to over 100 km. The eye diameter of severe cyclones of the northwest coast tends to be about 20 to 40 km and are typically smaller than those in some other parts of the world such as the North Pacific. The eye size of Tracy, Darwin, 1974, was just 12 kilometers across. Rosita, Broom, 2000, only had an eye diameter of 20 kilometers. Question 5. How are tropical cyclones different from tornadoes? Answer. While both tropical cyclones and tornadoes are atmospheric vortices, they have little in common. Tornadoes have diameters on the scale of hundreds of meters and are usually produced from a single thunderstorm. A tropical cyclone, however, has a diameter on the scale of hundreds of kilometers and contains many thunderstorms. Tornadoes are primarily an overland phenomena as solar heat heating of the land surface usually contributes toward the development of the thunderstorm that spawns the vortex, though over water tornadoes have occurred. In contrast, tropical cyclones are purely an oceanic phenomena. They die out over land due to a loss of a moisture source. Lastly, tropical cyclones have a lifetime that is measured in days, while tornadoes typically last on the scale of minutes. Question 6. What is the tropical cyclone's intensity scale? How is this different from the USA intensity scale? Answer. The severity of a tropical cyclone is described in terms of categories ranging from 1, weakest, to 5, strongest, related to the maximum mean wind speed as shown in this table. Note, corresponding approximate wind gusts and central pressure are also provided as a guide. Stronger gusts may be observed over hilltops, in gullies, and around structures. Question 7. What does maximum sustained winds mean? How does it relate to wind gusts in tropical cyclones? Answer. The Bureau of Meteorology uses a 10-minute averaging time for reporting the sustained, i.e. relatively long-lasting, wind. The maximum sustained wind are the highest 10-minute surface winds occurring within the circulation of the cyclone. These surface winds are those observed, or, more often, estimated, to occur at the standard meteorological 
geological height of 10 meters having an unobstructed exposure. Gusts are a wind peak lasting for just a few seconds. Typically, in a cyclone environment the value for a peak gust is about 25% higher than a 10-minute sustained wind. Barrow Island and Mardi sustained wind and wind gust profile during TC Monty, 2004. Question 8. Why do tropical cyclones form? Answer. The sun heats the tropical areas more than the polar region. If there were no wind, then the tropics would keep getting hotter and hotter, and the poles would get colder and colder. The atmosphere's basic function is to redistribute heat from the equator to the poles, and tropical cyclones are one mechanism by which this occurs. However, it is still quite remarkable that such a thing as a tropical cyclone should arise. It has been been said that if we had not actually observed tropical cyclones then, despite all we know about the physics of the atmosphere, we would never have guessed at their existence. Question 9. What is storm surge? Answer. Storm surge is a large mound of water that accompanies a tropical cyclone as it comes ashore. The intense winds of the cyclone pile up the ocean into a dome of water that is pushed onshore as the cyclone strikes the coast. The low pressure of the cyclone adds to the height of the mound of water, though this is a secondary effect. When the height of a storm surge is discussed it does not take into account the height of the large waves on top of of the mound of water. Question 10. How can I find out about severe weather warnings? Answer. Warnings of severe weather for the UK are issued by our National Meteorological Service, the Met Office. We also post a warning on the front page of our site. Follow this link to find out what severe weather warnings are in place today.